Good day, students. My name is Fanny Yi Sunday Olateju, your literature in English teacher. Our topic for today's literature lesson is the analysis of non-African poem titled The School Boy by William Blake, a romantic poet. Lesson Objectives At the end of the lesson, students should be able to interpret the poem, analyze the poem in terms of poetic devices, discuss the themes of the poem, and explain the events in the poem. Original poem will be read by William Bock. I love to rise in the summer morn when the birds sing on every tree. The distant huntsman winds his horn and the skylark sings with me. Oh, what sweet company! But to go to school in a summer morn, oh, it drives all joy away. Under a cruel eye outworn, the little ones spend the day in sighing and dismay. Ah, then at times I drooping sit and spend many an anxious hour. Nor in my book can I take delight, nor sit in learning's bower, worn through with the dreary shower. How can the bird that is born for joy sit in a cage and sing? How can a child, when fears annoy, but droop his tender wing and forget his youthful spring? O oh, father and mother, if buds are nipped and blossoms blown away, and if the tender plants are stripped of their joy in the springing day, by sorrow and care's dismay, how shall the summer rise in joy, or the summer fruits appear? Or how shall we gather what griefs destroy, or bless the mellowing year, when the blasts of winter appear? Summary of the School Boy The School Boy is a poem written in the pastoral tradition that focuses on the downsides of formal learning. It considers how going to school on a summer day, beginning of quotation, drives all joy away. End of quotation. The first answer describes a young boy who is delighted to rise in the fresh and pleasant summer morning. The chipping of the birds announces the daybreak. The lad is excited by associating himself with the hunter who blows his clarions from a distant feet and delightful songs of skylark. The child's joy is destroyed by constraint of having to go to school. The ideal unity between man and nature is destroyed in stanza 2, where there is a shift in tone to sorrowful one, beginning of quotation. But to go to school in a summer morning, oh, it drives all joy away, lines 6 to 7. The boy is frustrated because of the strictness and authoritative nature of his teacher. The boy complains about the constraint of education and the classroom where he cannot learn or take pleasure in his reading. The boy, beginning of quotation, sees drooping, end of quotation, and spends, beginning of quotation, many unanxious hour, end of quotation. The word drooping evokes the image of a gradual dying plant. Thus, the children, the little ones, spend his days in shy and dismay, lines 9 to 10. We will pause here briefly.
Students, welcome to the second segment, which is continuation of the summary of the poem, The School Boy. The child likens himself to a cage bed or a prisoner in a cell. The feeling that the boy has is that he is in bondage because he has been cut off from the fountain of happiness and joy embedded in nature. In this context, the classroom is a cage while the boy is a bed inside the cage. In angry lamentation, the boy makes a passionate appeal to his parents. The appeal is that if a promising child like him is removed from the source of happiness embedded in nature, then he will not be able to fulfill his destiny in future as in beginning of quotation. Oh, father and mother, if balls are nipped and blossoms blown away, and if the tender plants are stripped of their joy in the springing day, end of quotation, lines 21 to 24. The boy concludes that if childhood happiness is destroyed as a result of the imposition of a regimented lifestyle of education, adult life will be meaningless and unproductive. The next item is themes of the poem. One, freedom is better than imprisonment. The schoolboy is a critique of human societal restrictions on nature-loving human spirits. The poet reveals the condition of a child that wakes up in the morning and all the happiness he feels in the beginning of quotation, the bird sings on every tree and the sky lark sings with me, end of quotation disappears when he realizes that he has to go to school. Instead of joy of learning, all that the school represents to him is, beginning of quotation, sorrow and cares dismay, end of quotation. The child is suited to playing in the summer time phase, not to sitting captive to dry education system. Another theme, too, is wickedness and weakness of our educational system. The poem presents the unassailable figure of the teacher, absolute invaluable, authoritative, and uncannily omnipotent because the teacher has a cruel eyes. Line 8. The puppies spend the day in sign and dismay. Lines 9 to 10. Depict the frustration of puppies. The boy sees drooping. Means he is weak from exhaustion and spends many an anxious hour. The whole educational process presents the picture of a dry shower. Hence, the condition of schooling is something that is done to puppies rather than the puppies being active participants in their own learning. Another theme, three, is blissfulness of nature. The schoolboy is delighted in the natural world around him. The poet gives us a pastoral image of the innocence of nature, where, beginning of quotation, the best sings on every tree, and the sky lark sings with me, end of quotation, lines two to four. However, the schoolboy sees the child like a cage bed. He asks, how a bed born of joy 
can sit in a cage and sing. Line 16. The poet invites the reader to see difference between the freedom of imagination offered by, by close contact with nature and repression of the soul called by listening demands for a so-called education. We will pause here briefly. Students, welcome to the third segment, which is Poetic Devices of the Schoolboy. 1. Language The continuous verbs like drooping, shine, and the verb dismay and adjective anxious emphasize the boy's emotions. Some exclamations, ho, ha, lines 7 and 11, show vividly the sorrow of the child that is compelled to go to school by his parents. Two, another device is antithesis. The poem deals with the confinements of the classroom in which children are restricted and become the victims of the great teacher instead of allowing them to explore the wonders of nature. The schoolboy sees the child like a cage bed. We are asked, nature is represented in stanza one. We are the bears sing on every tree and the skylark sings with me. Another device is rhetorical questions. The dominant figures of speech in stanzas 4 to 6 is rhetorical questions that are laced with metaphorical expressions. The schoolboy is pretended like a bed in the cage. He asks, how a bed, beginning of quotation, born for joy, can sit in a cage and sing, end of quotation. Another device is the use of metaphor. The use of metaphor is evident with the word drooping in stanza 2, where it evokes the image of dying plants. Yet, it is more obvious in stanza 4, where the child is likened to an encaged bed. Also, the children living with grief always droop his tender wing. The metaphor referring back to the bed. The drooping means to sink or to hang downward or to lose all enthusiasm or happiness. Another device is the use of alliteration. The trinity of this poem is enhanced by the use of alliteration in line 3. Is horn, repetition of HH. Line 4. Skylark sings, repetition of SS. And line 6. School in a summer, repetition of SS. Line 16. Bed that is born, repetition of BB. And line 28. We gather what? Repetition of WU. W. Likely examination questions. Discuss the use of imagery in the schoolboy. Two, examine the use of antithesis in the schoolboy. Bibliography. Fanny Yi, S.O. 2014. Exam reflection. 12 poems. Published by Sovnese Press, Lagos. 2. Voice of William 
book on YouTube, reading the poem School Boy. Thank you and God bless.